Hi, this is your host, Barbara Wickman, and I'm excited to introduce Dana Magnus and her genius to the program today. Dana, I am so excited to have you join the program today. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you, Barbara. I'm really excited to be here today. Thank you. You know, we met, it hasn't even been that long ago. It it seems like so much longer ago, but it really hasn't been that much time. But in that short amount of time, I have come to absolutely uh, respect and adore you for so many different reasons. And um, I really wanted to have you on the program because I just think it's so important to have your level of creativity and maturity and knowledge shared with the folks that are are out there at any time, but especially during this time, but at any time to understand what they can and can't do. And and one of the things that I just wanna say that I really respect about you, and this is gonna sound really strange, so just don't take it too (laughs) weird. But I said, you know, how you describe Dana, Dana's like that linen, crisp scent, right? It's crisp, (laughs) it's clean, it's fresh, it's like that, those perfect, like you're just, you have everything that you do, you have this very um, crisp, clean, modern image that's so positive with an edge of ethical, um, this ethical view around it as well. And I I just really appreciate that. So why don't you take a moment to tell us a little bit about um, how you've come to where you are today? Well, thank you so much, Barbara. Those are such kind words. I appreciate you for saying that. That's really great. And I, um, I, I think that uh, you know, when you when you show up around like-minded people, you just feel this immediate connection. So just to speak on that. So thank you so much uh, for having me on here. But yeah, so my name is Dana Magnus of the Marketing Brand. Um, I'm a creative brand strategist and marketing content planner. Um, I help businesses, especially mission-driven businesses, organize their um, their, their content and what they're putting out there into the world and making sure that they're landing it every single time and creating an alignment with a community to, um, to create this movement around them through their business. So, um, so a little bit about me and what I do. I mean, I, I was telling you a little bit, I was a photographer for 10 years and photography has made me an entrepreneur. Um, never in a million years as a child or going to college, I never thought I was going to be a business owner. Um, but the love I had for photography and then, you know, of course, I, I, you never think about owning your own business, but one person asks you to come and, hey, can you take pictures over here? Can you take pictures over there? And then by the time you know it, you're making price lists and applying to, you know, yeah. with your accountant to be opening up, a, you know, a sole proprietorship and doing taxes and all this stuff. And it just kind of evolves. And um, that's kind of where my story began was through photography. And then, um, as I, uh, I went to school for marketing and advertising and I hated it when I was in college because it was one of those things that um, really as a young person, you're kind of brought to the, the real world way of business, right? And when you're studying a, a feed, like a focus like that, you realize, wow, there's everything I stand for, which is, um, you know, I always had a problem with landfills and garbage and waste yeah. and but I'm like, but advertising is the reason it's so bad, right? It <laughs> yeah, created, yeah. It created the consumer culture. So I had second guessed a lot of my ethics and what I was doing. Um, but I remember sitting in college one day, uh, there was a class and we had a, a section on corporate social responsibility. And we, the example that, the, you know, there wasn't a lot of that going on in the world. And I remember that uh, that moment that really turned for me was when, uh, Tom Shoes said they donated a pair of shoes to, um, you know, uh, children in need and families and, uh, you know, at the, the countries in need for every sh- pair of shoes sold. And to me, I was like, oh, business can be used for good. And so mm-hmm. ever since then, it was embedded in me that I was going to use this, uh, I guess, my profession and um, the mission that I have to make the world a better place through business. And it just kind of all fell together um, with the marketing brands. So that's a little bit about my background and how it all came to be. That's a great story of how you actually come came to be able to live your ethical values, you know, which a lot of people, as you say, they give up when they go into the corporate world and, and they really struggle with that. So that's a wonderful way for you to continue to live that. Yeah, so I mean, me- and it wasn't always like that. 
yeah, I was going to say it wasn't always that way because you don't see that immediately until you're kind of the boss. And, and I know the show is about leadership. So until you can take a leadership role and make the changes you want to see, it's, it's interesting how your journey takes you from, from place to place until you really find that purpose of where you're, where you're supposed to be. So. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so now you're the creative marketer. Tell me a little bit about your ideal client. Who comes to you for services? Yeah. So for me, the ideal client is a business that I don't have to explain uh, the ethics of business, or I don't have to explain that um, what they should be putting out there in the world has to be authentic and personable and uh, coming straight from your heart. Um, if I have to explain the mission driven side, they're probably not, not a good fit client for me. So it's uh, clients that already are using the verbiage on their current marketing that they're changing the world or they're making the world a better place or they're really trying to have some sort of social impact or social good going on. Um, and so it's not as if I detract those other clients enough, but I do have um, a, kind of this niche where a lot of this strategy that I work with in creating marketing content comes from specific questions and specific coaching around deriving your mission and placing it into a, a really appropriate area into how your customers are going to right experience it yeah and you know and just most importantly i like working with fun people who <laughs> just like to be out there and put their best foot out there and say you know what if i'm not perfect it's okay but um what we're doing is we're we're on a ceo journey we're starting from where we are what our backgrounds are and where we're going and we believe that you know what we're doing really means something and it, it has a Purpose. So those are really my ideal clients. They're typically service-based professionals. Um, I don't work too much in product or um, mm -hmm. e-commerce, but a lot of the service-based professionals who, you know, just really are the face and the name of their company and they want to put more of their story out there. That's so wonderful that you actually have almost a gating process uh, or a vetting process of who you want to work with so that you, when you get down the line, you don't have to worry about something you're being so far apart that you're going to split up so that's a wonderful to have that i'm not sure that everyone has that um, i think sometimes people just will take any client that they have so i really i love to hear you say that because i think that's really important you know especially nowadays right because there's just such a divergence between those who really believe in the ethics and some that really kind of you know push the ethic boundaries a little bit yeah and marketing is such a vast like now service, there are so many different levels of marketing. So um, you can work with at least three to four different marketers on one business um, for many different reasons or to achieve different objectives and goals. So it's really because of the, the age of technology and information, I'll just share a little quick fact here is that um, back when I first started learning about advertising, right? You think about all the touch points in a marketing journey. So if I was you know, if I was a bakery down the street, I only really had to interact with a new customer, maybe, you know, five to seven times before mm -hmm. they really fell in love with me and became a loyal client. Well, today's age with social media and all the different noise out there, we're looking at close to 33 touch points that a new Gosh. fresh cold customer needs in order to develop our trust and want to buy with us. So it's, it's very crazy <laughs> out there. You know, it, and it sounds overwhelming, but, and honestly, it's not overwhelming. It's just, you have to have a plan for that. So help me understand a little bit about why do clients come to you? What do they ask for your services? What do they want you to help with? Yep, and that's a perfect transition. So marketing planning is something that only 50% of uh, traditional small to medium-sized businesses do and actually make time for and prioritize, which I, I think is is really um, is really challenging kind of practice for them because if they're in the stage of always wanting to grow and maximize their visibility, um, if they're only doing that half the time or they're not really putting in the effort to do it, um, to create a marketing plan, it's really difficult for them to consistently like make predictions and foresee and, and calculate, um, you know, how they're going to forecast their year or the next year, bring in clients and uh, paying their employees and just covering all their basic expenses. I mean, it's, it's a really wise and just sustainable solution to have plans in place. And then I know what happened in the last month or two, we've seen our whole entire world 
just shift completely upside down. Yeah. And instead of having to baking everything from scratch and figure out, okay, you know, I got to make the dough and I got to figure out where all these ingredients are coming from. All you had to do was just tweak the recipe um, for say your, your, your business and say, okay, these couple things aren't going to work anymore. Let's just implement a few more changes and make it, uh, make things adapt a bit more. Um, so it's just, I don't know. It's, it's a world of chaos if you operate without a plan or without any kind of uh, structure. And I, I just know that that just increases your stress level. It, it doesn't bring out the best you that you can be. And just overall, you know, you just struggle to find balance in your business and your life. So it's, it's just an uphill battle if you don't have a plan. So is there one piece of really practical advice that you give all of your clients, whether it's the upside down days or the right side up days, what's the, like the one fundamental thing that you tell everybody? I just tell a lot of people, this is kind of my mantra of the year is lead by example. You know, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be, um, you know, who you need to be in stages far past where you are right now, but just do your best, show up every day and be the example that you want to see, um, you know, the people around you to see. And so that can, you know, especially with the, the type of clientele that I have, it's really about if you're going to be talking the talk, right, you better walk the walk. So if you're going to be talking about changing the world, you know, think about how you can start contributing to uh, volunteering or doing some really kind of great mission work, uh, you know, maybe visit a really great place on vacation that embeds with your mission. I know I did that last year in Costa Rica. It's I really planned out like pieces in my trip that we are going to contribute to like, you know, different parts of sustainability in the environment and just trying wow. to say this is stuff that you really believe in, bake it into your everyday life, lead by example, and just make it part of who you are in your personal brand. Do you find that's easier or hard for people to actually do? Well, it depends on the person. I'll say that. And this is <laughs> again where, um, you know, I, I feel like, I feel like whatever it is, stay curious. Um, I'll, I'll make a little story here as I have a, a, an effort or a movement, I guess, on social media. It's really just a hashtag and it's a, an activity that I do. I, I try to get out every Wednesday, um, of course, with their current circumstances. But yeah. um, I, I like how you asked that question is, is it easy to do? Is it easy to kind of live out your mission and do the things that you say you want to do? And I think that it really comes down to when did we stop, you know, reaching our dreams and going after our big goals and dreaming big about the things that, you know, we, we wanted as a 10 year old. I know Sarah Victory talks a lot about that. Like think about when you were 10 years old, what did you really, really, really want? And, um, you know, it, it's interesting because you can, you can be an adult and get so wrapped up into the mundane and say, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. Oh, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. By the time you know what years go by and you're not really fulfilling your purpose or your, or your, or your vision or your mission. Mm -hmm. And um, so what I did is I created worldview Wednesdays and it's really just for the sake of adults going out, learning something new, uh, learning about the local economy, you know, contributing to, some sort of philanthropic effort, whatever it is. Um, but for me, I use it through supporting B corporations and local nice. uh, farm to table, sustainably focused, either storefronts or places for lunch. And I mean, that's just such a small, tiny example of what I'm doing to, like I said, lead by my mission and lead by example. But you have to bake it in, right? You can't, right. you can't make things so monumental and huge and only going on a mission trip every year you know, three or four years and saying, well, that's where I live out. But right. you can start doing things in your local community right now and through right. every purchase that you make with a product, right? So I could talk for hours at end on that. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead, if you would tell everyone what a B Corporation is. I love B Corporations, but I'm not sure everyone really understands what a B Corporation truly is. Sure. So as a lot of you guys know from my story, um, consumerism is really, uh, I guess, the driving factor to, um, like the consumer demand is a driving factor to what kind of some of the outcomes of production and what happens in our environment and um, how fast and rapid production needs to be, you know, manufactured. So how, uh, you know, employees are and, and workers are being treated. Um, so the B Corporation has uh, taken a stand. Um, I believe it started, uh, at least it's been around for two decades. Yeah. And um, they have started with 
this movement of, of kind of setting some standards for businesses. And again, this is nothing, uh, it, it is not a legal status. This is straight up a marketing yeah. kind of sticker um, to put on your footer of your website and in front of your storefront and on all your packaging on a uh, consumer good. But the B Corporation movement is really just trying to be more like a community and a movement of business owners who are using business as a force for good. And their main priority is to achieve um, as close to the, a triple bottom line as possible. So an equal balance of people, planet, and profits. And they have um, five, I always mess this up, it's either four or five categories. Um, so it's governance, uh, community, uh, customers, you know, like the workers and your, your people, right. and then also the environment. I believe that that should be five. Just don't quote me on it, even though I look at that screen almost once a week. Um, <laughs> And uh, that's just the human in me, right? We forget yep. these things. But um, it's really amazing because uh, we started out, I would say last year around this exact time in 2019, um, I was, you know, beginning my journey to start applying and figure out if this was going to be for me and if I can apply, you know, apply my business in there. 2,500 companies, okay? Now, what is miraculous and makes me jump for joy is that now today in 2020, we are close to almost 4,000 companies certified in B corporations, B corporations around the entire world. Which if you think about it, that's only 4,000 companies out of all the entire world. Um, but just to see that shift in the last year of how rapid the demand has grown for, uh, you know, bigger CEOs and ethical leaders to step up. I yeah. mean, my mission to help really at least 100 companies by the end of my days to really, uh, you know, convert themselves into being a B corporation. But um, almost uh, like the last, uh, the last thing you probably would just be like, oh, okay, I finally get it. Um, companies like Patagonia, Warby Parker, um, Ben and Jerry's ice cream, Jenny's ice cream. I know there's a lot of ice cream, right? Um, and, um, you know, uh, Everlane, um, there, there's a bunch of uh, companies that when you go to their website and start reading about them, you're like, wow, these people really care about more than just being a CEO and being self-serving and just for me. So it's all about the rest of the world. Yeah, I think that was a really great explanation. Thank you for that. Because I know I see pieces out there, but I think that is a really full um, understanding. But, you know, the good news is there's 4,000 corporations that weren't there before. So it, it is a definitely a movement and movements just take time to, to keep going. But it sounds like they're getting some traction. So that's good to hear. So, you know, you do, you do a lot, you know, and, and like, like I said, I always love to watch everything that you do because this whole creative, crisp, like just bright um, image that you have and that you create on your marketing is just so refreshing. What, what makes you want to get up and start the fire? Like what stokes you when you wake up in the morning? What, what, what makes you want to get and push that sun up in the morning and get going? Oh, wow. Well, that's been a really uh, interesting question lately because, <laughs> you know, when you're, when you're tirelessly like baked into all the things that you're doing, it's just, I really just love seeing a transformation in leadership um, and in people and for them to, I know like there's some businesses that I still work with that are, you know, I just know that their, that their models are very efficient and, um, and just, Sometimes I go through the first couple sessions with them in my blueprint uh, strategy uh, package. It's really where we create the six month marketing plan. And this is to answer your question is it really drives me when I can see these conversations unfold that no one's ever asked these business owners questions like this. No one's ever taken the time to really explore what they truly want. When they look back down me, and I, I love your background right there. That's like literally the, the description of what I say. You know, if you have a long fence and down a long, you know, yep. grove of trees or something, you look down the road and you say, what do I want to see that I've experienced or that I've created or that I left behind in my legacy? Um, you know, it, it's just, they light up and they just, they just are like, yep. wow, this is like a business therapy session. This is so awesome. And for me to see that business owners can take control and take back that ownership of what they want and how they want to really deliver uh, their message and deliver their, their brand really is what it is. Right. Um, that to me makes me feel like I'm doing my job because they're able to now translate that in an easy and tangible way uh, to all the people that need to hear about them because they're not, and this is a quote I always talk about is like, 
if you're not exactly marketing your business, you're depriving the rest of the world from the amazing solutions and products that you offer that can really make a difference in their life. I love that. That is such a different way to look at it. Cause I think people look at marketing as trying to push something and that really is more of a pull uh, kind of approach and um, a proud way to do it. And um, I love that. That's a really good way to explain it. So you're a leader. Yeah. You're a leader, you're a leader <laughs> in your field, obviously. Um, how do you define leadership? Barbara Wickman. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I define it. I define it by you. Aww. So you. I, I was so moved by when you presented, Barbara. Um, you did such an amazing job of of that when you presented your story. And it really, I mean, to this day, I, I, I see you and your story as a leader. So if anyone hasn't heard Barbara's story yet, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, but I mean, it hits home with a new perspective of leadership is really it's about when the when everything else is, you know, um, you know, going the opposite way, you're, you're willing to go against the grain and just really dig deep inside and say, this is what I really truly believe in. And even if it's unpopular or if it's not easy or if it's not, you know, right there set in stone, I believe that leadership is about taking control of um, what you believe is important and saying, well, if not me, who? And um, I'm going to do it anyway, because whether I have no money or I have no time or whatever, we're going to just keep sowing the seeds every single day and make this work because this is what needs to be done. And if you don't ex exemplify that type of character in yourself, um, it's hard to, it's hard for people to follow you and to look up to you and respect you. You see that on Shark Tank all the time, right? Like Mark Cuban <laughs> yeah. always jumps up and down, like yeah. he wants to see the hustlers, right? Yeah. Um, so I just think that, yeah, I just think that leadership is really about uh, the perseverance, really. And it's, it's about like saying yes when everyone else around you might be doubting you and saying no and saying you can't do it. Well, and I wonder, I, well, thank you for saying that. First of all, that's very kind of you. Um, but I, that's one of the reasons I think that I see in you also is kind of that, that kindred spirit that we have is willing to take on a very different perspective on the world, um, but not let the world tell you that you're wrong. And, and what's interesting about that is these days that's even more important than ever, right? I mean, as you, I think you said, like, just keep going every day and doing something every day. And even though people yeah. are telling you, you should be doing something else, if you believe it, keep moving, because those are the people that will end up surviving uh, this time as they did in the yeah. past. Right. No, absolutely. I totally believe that for sure. No, it, it, what's really interesting also, you know, sometimes for, for me, it was hard to find a mentor sometimes because a lot of the mentors that I had were very traditional mentors and wanted to um, coach me and mentor me in ways that they've mentored and coached other people. So when I found a mentor that was understood me differently, I really, really used everything they shared with me. Have you had mentors um, in your career or in your life that have really helped you expand and grow? I can tell you from such a very young age, I sought out mentors. Um, and I can't explain how or why, but, you know, I believe that, you know, if it was at first your parents, then it's definitely uh, when you start to really define those specialty areas in your life that, you know, hmm, there has to be someone really knowledgeable in this. Yeah. Um, and I reached out, I can remember the story. Um, I was, I was in uh, a senior in high school mm -hmm. and uh, or I must have been a junior in high school, gone to a yearbook kind of workshop. And it was the local community college that I was going to be going to, um, you know, if I, if, if, you know, I, I thought I was going to be going there. And I, I sought out, I'm like, whoa, this guy, he was the college photographer. His name is Glenn. And he totally just knew his stuff. And it blew my mind. And I've always just been reading books and going on blogs. I mean, this was in 2007 at the time. And I was teaching myself everything I can know about photography, right? Um, and it, I don't know what came over me, but it just came to a point where I just went up to him. I'm, I'm like, can you come to our high school photography club? I didn't even have it yet, but I started it. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, I, I want you to teach a class and, and, and we want to pick your brain. And he said yes. And it was crazy because then a year later, I remember my older sister was graduating um, from the community college and I was there. I was still in high school. 
So that would have been my senior year. And I tapped him on the shoulder. He was shooting the, the high, you know, the college graduation. And I went up to him. I said, Hey, I'm going to be coming here next year. Uh, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm Dana and I hold your camera bag and help you out. And I want to learn everything that you can possibly teach me. And he just looked at me like, uh, <laughs> You lost? Did you lose your mom? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and, uh, I, yeah, I was such a weirdo. Um, when you think about it, it like, thinking back, it was so strange. My, my parents are probably like, what the heck? Where'd she go? Um, and then he ended up t taking me under his wing and taught me everything I know and set me up with a, a wedding photographer that I could train under because he didn't do weddings. And then uh, he introduced me to the camera store that I later worked at. And I just was curious and I just was bold in my ask and I, I knew that I needed help and I knew that I needed to figure this out and I found somebody and I kind of think that I adapted that same mentality since when I was 17 years old and I still do that now and I know that I, I reach out to a lot of people for coaching and things like that but I just felt so valued when somebody can look at you and say and I think it, it has to do with too is when you ask for help versus when right. somebody is always soliciting help to you, there's a difference. And that's now what I understand um, is that when you have good questions and you're willing to do the work and you're willing to learn, I mean, that's really, really great mentorship. Yeah. So I was very, um, I was very excited that I, you know, just swallowed my pride and just went and asked for it. Yeah. And that was really what set a, a good tone for me for the rest of my life. Yeah, mentors are really interesting because, you know, some people think about mentors as, well, I'm not, I'm not good, so I need a mentor. And that's not it at all. It's about elevating who you are and elevating your awareness and capabilities, isn't it? And they teach you more than the actual skill or thing that you, you need. It's like yeah. they teach you all those things that you didn't know that you didn't know, which is amazing. Yeah. That's what I love about mentorships as well is that you get that real world taste of what those, that thing that you think you want is and what it really is on the very human level. Yeah. Yeah. So is there a leader that you really admire that like if you could put a statue in your front yard of that person, who would that be <laughs> for you? Oh my gosh. Uh, I know you sent me that. This is always hard for me because I believe that in different points in our life, we meet different people that we need different things. Um, but I believe that a, if I were to really describe, I mean, I've had a really a great array of a fantastic leaders in my life. I mean, even throughout my, uh, you know, just working part-time jobs, even just my next door neighbor, I could tell you, he taught me when I was 10 years old, how to water plants and, you know, show up to work at seven o'clock in the morning every day, just, you know, just to help him out around his house. Yeah. But like, that was a leader to, for someone to sit down and say, I believe in you. I, I trust that you're going to do a good job. Um, so honestly, it's, I, I know I want to answer your question very, <laughs> very accurately, but, um, you know, right now my goal is looking up to Elon Musk for a lot of things he's doing. And I'm sure in 10 years, he'll be totally off my radar <laughs> right now. I think what he's doing to kind of pioneer the science and, um, innovation area in, in our world and in our, um, just it, it, the overall global scale, he really steps up as a leader because if you hear his story on Netflix, uh, he was that very unpopular guy that yeah. no one, no one believed in and that he failed right. a million times and everything he did publicly even was humiliating. Um, but he said, no, like, this is my life's work. This is what I got to do. I'm going to keep drilling away. I'm going to keep figuring it out and look at him now. Uh, his car yeah. is yeah. three of the six most um, popular car in uh, the U.S. In the world, I don't know if it's the world of the United States now, but you know what I mean? It's like the yeah. people who persevere really. It yeah. is. Another people that had another person that had a lot of naysayers around them who kind of said, "Forget you, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it." Um, yeah, absolutely. So, what what advice and counsel would you give to up and coming leaders or um, new entrepreneurs right now? Well, I know that sounds so cheesy, but just really stay in your lane and be yourself. Um, part of uh, what I like to give out to people in the Your Ethical Business uh, community group that I run is really about, um, you know, keeping, keeping centered your purpose. Like if, if the world around you is crumbling, I mean, we've seen, this is like more important than ever right now is like so many things change and so many things about the exterior world and the exterior motivations you have and 
what you think you want and, and all that stuff. But just like when, and I love how, again, I hate to bring it up again, but you know, when you think about when you're so, so, so young, that sparkle in your eye of whatever you wanted to do, um, you know, whatever it was, keep that alive, mm -hmm. keep that really mm -hmm. strong. Because I'm telling you, like, that was given to you for such a big reason. Mm -hmm. And it's on purpose. It really was on purpose that you had that feeling of, ooh, I need to do that. When you're so innocent, when you don't know so much. But that still is really important to you. So if you need to spend at least, you know, um, you know, a day each quarter or, you know, a couple hours once, once a month just – re-envisioning that and what it means for you and how it fits into today's world and society. I think that that's my biggest advice because your leadership will shine through and come out yeah. with it, with that type of, uh, you know, yeah. alignment with purpose. Yeah. And that's good for anyone at any age, isn't it? Whether you're a, a new business owner or a young entrepreneur or, you know, someone starting something new at 40, 50 or even 60. I mean, that's a great advice. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So is there anything that we haven't talked about that you think is really important to share about um, leadership or creative marketing or um, anything that's on your mind that that's been kind of swirling around back there since we started chatting? Well, I think what really makes us human um, is really about our connections and our community and what our leaders of we don't have community, right? So um, I like to say uh, a lot of the a lot of the the kind of marketing that I teach and help uh, other entrepreneurs with is really to just stop stop marketing to sell stuff and push your agenda and push your thought leadership and just market and put yourself out there from that definition that we talked about earlier is market to cultivate community because community means everything and. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in really showing up for people, showing up in leadership, right? For it's like, for who? who? Who are the people you're leading? Why are you leading them? What are you trying to change? What are you trying to re make, you know, make a hand in? And so if you're feeling like you're, you're a leader of none and you don't really know who uh, your leadership is valued to, I think that's just as important is yeah. to really look look outside and look around you and get a different world view and say, okay, who are my people? Who do I need to help? Who, are, who do I need to show up for? And it doesn't necessarily have to be just direct customers and consumers of yours. It can be your referral partners. It can be, you know, just like you and I, like just partners yeah, exactly. and people we love. And, we trust. Yeah. and um, these are the people that you really want to pay attention to and ask questions in. And, and nourish that relationship uh, because th your community, like like I said, again, in this changing world, your products and services, I've seen it so much right now. People have pivoted and shifted a lot of their offerings. And if those offerings are no longer applicable to a particular client or customer, it still will be relevant to your community around you or people who are going to support you and refer you and share the good things that you're doing with, with somebody else who's more of a fit, but they're not going anywhere because they're your people. Exactly. And they're same mission as you are and you're leading them in that you're leading your tribe to do the things that you want to see done in the world as your your offerings change and they're cheering you on typically too i mean if they may not need what you have or what your pivot is um, but they'll be there cheering you on all the way and and that's really important to have that as well yeah so dana um as always i you know i would just love to spend like three four five days with you having conversation but this has been um you know, a great insight into that wonderful mind of yours and, and that gift that you have of love for, you know, the world and community. And I really appreciate you spending time um, with me and sharing your, your message with others. Is, is there a way, uh, or what is the best way for people to get in touch with you? Yeah, they, they sure. a little bit more. <clears throat> I think, uh, well, it's funny you say three or four days, because I am having a retreat coming up in October. <laughs> So if anyone's interested in hanging out with me for three days at the uh, marketing retreat, no, but um, the best way to really hang out in my tribe and my community is to join uh, Your Ethical Business. It's on Facebook and LinkedIn, and um, that's the kind of the closest that you can get to me on a regular basis. Um, I do have a show every Friday where I feature um, ethical leaders live. 
But um, just more importantly, I want to hear about you. I want to hear what you really are up to and, and how you're, you know, for business owners who are looking to really expand their ethical leadership. Um, that's a great place to start or else they can uh, catch me on my website, danamagnus.com. So um, there you can find kind of the different offerings and different pieces that I'm, uh, I'm working on, whether it's a photography related or a marketing related endeavor. Um, but yeah, those two are pretty much the, the best outlets to uh, get a hold of me. That's great. And I just want to spell, because this is all going to be on podcast, so it would be D-A-N-A-M-A-G-N-U-S dot com, right? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, Dana, thank you again. Um, as always, I appreciate you and, and I look forward to being at the next event with you again so we can, uh, we can win another prize like we did last time. <laughs> Take selfies, get on out there, and yeah, there's nothing like a big hug that I'm really missing right now from all my people. So, yeah. well, thank you, Barbara. This has been fantastic and, um, you know, I love, I love what you're doing and please keep it up. It's amazing. Thank yeah, you. you do the same. You keep inspiring all of us, okay? Thank you. All right. Have a great one. <laughs> you do. Bye-bye now. Bye.